Welcome to the Smart Connector, the podcast that helps entrepreneurs be the leader their ideal people love. Build your influence, wealth and success, attract others for all the right reasons and become a Smart Connector, the architect of your amazing business and life. In our automated, fast-paced online world, it's common for entrepreneurs to feel lost and confused. They're chasing the skill set of success without the mindset. They're plagued by difficult feelings because that's our default human condition. And if they're busy and overwhelmed, they don't feel as though they have the time or practical and financial support to truly process them. The problem with this is it shows People can intuitively sense whether you're in a confident, peaceful and joyful place or struggling and they'll often choose to align themselves with you on that basis. Now when I say struggling, this doesn't mean actual struggle because most entrepreneurs have struggled in terms of their business and probably their life as business and life are always connected. However, to attract high quality people into your business and life, you have to take the steps to detach from both your struggle and pain and the consequences of it. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, the law of attraction has been misunderstood, simplified and interpreted incorrectly by many over the years. And while I'm not claiming to be a manifestation or law of attraction guru, as a cancer survivor with a history of abuse and trauma myself, And as a serial entrepreneur who refused to give up on life and my dreams as a result, I've had to master many aspects of mindset and really understand and apply these principles more than some people who have not had a story like mine. So I've worked really hard at mindset and energetic principles. I think I understand them quite deeply. And the processes I've applied in my own life to reverse a legacy of suffering and bring me both business success and multiple high-value relationships with exactly the right people is the process that I'm going to talk about here. Now, I don't want to overcomplicate things, so I'm just going to give you three steps to change your energy and become a higher vibe version of yourself, so that when you step into the arena with your ideal clients, you're the most confident and compelling version of yourself, someone who is genuinely able to give them full focus and attention without the distraction of your insecurity, pain, or inner turmoil. The first principle is believe you are blessed and lucky. You need to stop seeing yourself as a victim and see yourself instead as one of the luckiest people on the planet. If you struggle to do this, I encourage you to create a set of affirmations and declarations that you repeat daily, whenever you remember and even when you wake up at night. You can say something like, I am the luckiest person alive. Everything works out perfectly for me at the right time, in the right place and in the right way for me to live my life with joy and limitless possibility. That's just one example and I'm sure you can make up many of your own. Have you ever noticed how some of the wealthiest people in the world are the unhappiest? With money struggles taken away, their lives lack purpose They feel sorry for themselves and they expect others to feel sorry for them too. Their problems might seem ridiculous to most people, but to them they're awful. Whereas there are other people who experience considerable hardship and who have almost nothing, who greet others with a cheerful smile and a laugh every day. Now I'm not saying this is the rule because... There are happy, wealthy people and unhappy, poor people. But what I'm saying is that it's all about a conscious choice that was made at some point in their lives around identity and values. Anyone can choose to focus on lack or abundance, and that decision will have a massive impact, both on how others respond to you and on how you feel about yourself. The important thing here is to become conscious around and never accept a feeling of less than or inferiority to another human being. Wherever you are in life, whatever other people's judgments or attitudes towards you, your successes or failures, that's their stuff and all you need to do is recognise that your life truly is abundant right now. With every day that you wake up in a healthy body with a roof over your head and enough food to eat, And once you focus on that abundance, it will start to multiply exponentially. Gratitude is another important tool here to eliminate self-pity and replace it with that irresistible high-vibe energy. 
Whenever you start to feel sorry for yourself, just acknowledge the thought and thank yourself for it, as this is also being grateful and a way of honouring yourself and your feelings. And then immediately find something that is going well or bringing you comfort and strength and consciously give thanks for that. I practice this habit all the time and find it super valuable. The second principle is extreme ownership, and this involves taking extreme responsibility for your past, present and future self, rewriting your story to evolve your pain into blessings and lessons, forgiving yourself rather than deflecting blame or judgment onto others, and truly owning and being at peace with all your life experiences, as well as your strengths, weaknesses, faults and flaws. And this is the exact opposite of blame shifting. It involves you taking full responsibility always for everything that goes wrong in your life, interrogating yourself without judgment or blame towards yourself either as to what you could have done better and what you could do differently next time to get a a better outcome. And this generates success and happiness in three important ways. First off, people love to work and engage with problem solvers, not blame shifters. Secondly, accountability makes you more attractive. Taking full responsibility for your actions generates respect from others and improves every relationship you have in business and life. And third, developing a habit of personal responsibility and forgiveness helps you become the most resilient, peaceful and empowered version of yourself, improving your chances of success and making it easier for you to to reach your goals. Extreme ownership is the most loving approach you can take towards yourself because it eliminates the self-hatred and that shame that is so common amongst us damaged and flawed humans and replaces it with a spirit of inquiry and continuous improvement instead. If you feel you would like to take this concept further and make the shift to extreme ownership, take some time to write a short bio of your life and identify up to 10 pivotal events that you found difficult and that you relive in painful ways from time to time in your mind. And then take each one of those and find the blessing and the lesson in it. This process can be done with support if the pain or the trauma is severe, or you can do it alone. But as one of my mentors, Dr. John Demartini, says, for every trait and pain, there is an equivalent and complementary opposite. You just have to open your mind and be willing to find it. The third principle is authenticity and vulnerability. Again, these are concepts that are banded about without most people really understanding what they mean. This is about the practice of expressing your full self as truthfully as possible. Culturally, and if you go back a hundred years or so, most of us humans didn't have a car. We didn't leave our country or go on exotic holidays. We lived in tight communities. Go back even further and we lived in even smaller villages, rural communities where secrets spread like wildfire and our entire social acceptance and well-being rested with a small group of localised individuals. Think about that today. If you live in a cul-de-sac, for example, imagine that cul-de-sac is a village from which you couldn't escape or access the wider world. You'd be stuck with those, with those neighbours of yours and you wouldn't want to reveal your innermost secrets and feelings to them. Because if you did, you'd face the very real risk of social ostracisation and exclusion. Instead, you just do your best to fit in, make small talk and talk about the weather, maybe a little gossip and gripe if you got to know them well about the neighbours down the road who don't look after their front garden or any of the other usual neighbourly stuff. But what you wouldn't do is talk about your disappointments, your hopes, fears, deepest desires, doubts about your partner or frustration with your kids, your excitement about a new lover or your worries about money. None of that is off limits, on the other hand, if you express yourself authentically. Authentic expression means not hiding behind small talk. It means telling it exactly like it is without fear of judgment or social exclusion. Authenticity is actually a massive gift to others because it blows away that small talk that creates emotional distance and isolates human beings with their feelings. Telling your authentic truth is like giving a starving person a feast. It tells them they're not alone in the world anymore. And it's really the best thing you can do for yourself too because it's a bit like throwing off all your clothes and rushing into the sea naked. It's just an act of courage, trust and faith in yourself. So you might be thinking, if it feels so good, 
Why don't people do it more? Well, of course, it partly comes down to trust. We get scared that people will misuse the emotional information that we're giving them, that they will gossip about us to others. The truth is, some people will, but we can choose who to reveal ourselves to. We don't have to confide in people we don't like or trust. Now, if you're looking for your ideal clients, the chances are you're going to have to express yourself through social media and get used to communicating through screens. So how can you be the most authentic version of yourself when you have no idea who's watching you, judging you, hating you or dismissing you? Some of those people are going to be people we might not choose to have in our real life for sure. Just as, thanks to apps like Tinder, the world of dating has changed in the UK beyond recognition from our parents' generation to the point that friends with benefits is the norm amongst young people and becoming exclusive is an event that's greeted with massive accolades, a bit like an engagement announcement used to be. Social media has changed the way enlightened, digital savvy leaders approach communication. People like us know that when we're exposed to huge numbers of people online, building a following and a tribe will have the equivalent effect of alienating some. And whether it's 50-50, in other words, 50% of people like you and 50% don't, or 70-30, 80-20, or whatever, it doesn't really matter because only the top 5% of your audience are likely to be warm enough to be your prospects. And out of those, maybe 1% will become raving fans and your best clients. The remaining 99% will stay indifferent, cold or vaguely and unintentionally supportive to you at that point. And it really doesn't matter. You're not living in that little bubble of localised life anymore. In our digitally enabled world, it's never been easier to build a like-minded tribe who you can be totally yourself with. And anyone that doesn't want to do this is often just playing small and playing the rules of a different era because of their own dislike or fear of change. Most people are not your people. Just remember that. But the ones that are will bring you everything you need in life. More money, more fun, more freedom, more connection. But first of all, you have to understand the way it's working today. What are the new rules of connection and why nothing is the same anymore? You have to risk exposure to attract your ideal clients. You have to be comfortable with rejection. You have to resist the people pleasing because once you go out there on social media and into the digital realm, people pleasing is the equivalent of small talk. You have to polarise to cut through the noise and the best way of doing this is by being completely and utterly yourself. So to recap, the three steps that will get you to step into your value and connect powerfully with others from a place of strength and confidence are believe you're blessed and lucky, live life with an attitude of extreme ownership and be real always. Thank you for listening to this podcast and look forward to seeing you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Smart Connector podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, why not head over to janebaylor.com and order a copy of my free report on building your personal brand. I'd love to connect with you on social media. And finally, don't forget to like and subscribe to my podcast so that you never miss a show. Thanks for listening in and see you soon.